Hey, welcome back you fine people on the internet. Now in this video we're looking at the future of the Commonwealth Games. Does it even have a future? And there are multiple reasons why I think the future is very uncertain uh, for the Commonwealth Games. Now the last hosts of the Commonwealth Games was the city of Birmingham here in the UK. Now the reason why I'm doing this video is, is the aftermath. Birmingham City Council, the biggest uh, local government authority, not only in the UK but in Europe, has basically declared itself bankrupt. It's it's run out of money. And in the statement given by the head of the council, it, it, he stated that uh, hosting the games was a bit of a mistake and maybe they shouldn't have. Which I think, I find that surprising considering they had a long time to prepare uh, for the event. They put a lot of money, uh, both local funds and government funds and, and, and private funds were invested in the city of Birmingham for the sporting infrastructure. Massive, massive infrastructure projects have taken, across, uh, uh, taken place across Birmingham in the build-up to the Commonwealth Games. But also, earlier this year, the, the Australian state of Victoria, so basically Melbourne, uh, withdrew from hosting uh, the next Commonwealth Games. Gold Coast, who were the previous hosts before Birmingham, said, we're happy to do it again, but they were heavily criticised for how they organised it, uh, the, the, the promotion of it, uh, the, the actual event, heavily criticised both domestically in Australia and globally in the media. Uh, there was a lot of fans who were left a little bit uh, underwhelmed by the event, not the actual athletes taking part in all the events, but the actual organisation, the fan experience. Uh, there was a lot of issues with Gold Coast uh, a few years back. But there is no guaranteed host for the next Games, which I believe is in 2026. So there's three years to find a host. But the Commonwealth Games isn't the only, ma only major sporting event, international sporting event, I mean, including international tournaments. That's got a bit of a uh, dodgy future. And we can also look at previous um, sporting events, such as the Olympics, that have come with a, a, a political cost and a financial cost. So, does the Commonwealth Games have a future? Now, the reason, again, look at the amount of money you've got to put in and how much money you're going to get back. Now, Birmingham's got a lot of other issues uh, that aren't just the Commonwealth Games related. And I can do a video on Birmingham City's, you know, the city of Birmingham going basically filing for bankruptcy on the other channel. But historically, the Olympics as well has been ribbonlessly expensive. Uh, the Montreal Games, uh, in I think it was 1976, there were issues in even getting uh, the facilities ready um, for the Games itself. The, the, the workers who were building uh, all the stadiums and event locations and all the related infrastructure, there was regular strikes in Canada in the, in the mid-70s. There was an economic downturn and it, it was a ruinous uh, Games, financially at least, and not a very memorable Olympic Games, if you look back, um, for the Canadian government. It, it led to the Quebec government, I think, losing the next election and the, and the Canadian Prime Minister having to basically address the nation saying, it's cost us a lot of money. Oh, and a lot of bad press came out and it was, it was a very uh, forgettable Olympics. Fast forward to 2004 and Athens bankrupted the city and bankrupted the Greek government. Um, massive, massive loss making enterprise. Uh, a lot of the facilities built for the Athens Games are left crumbling uh, around Greece. Uh, absolute shambolic overspend. Fantastic Olympic Games that it was. I remember very fondly uh, watching that Olympic Games, but uh, the aftermath of it, Greece is still feeling the financial effects. 19 years later, um, the Rio Olympics very similar story uh, that led to statewide corruption investigations and again a lot of the facilities built for the Rio Games are being used now they're again left to crumble and it was ruinously expensive the Tokyo Olympics that was delayed uh, that became a political nightmare uh, for the, the organizers and the, the Japanese government it's weakened the Japanese govern, government domestically a lot of Japanese who don't normally protest were protesting about uh, hosting the Olympics, considering the year before they'd hosted a successful Rugby World Cup, fantastic Rugby World Cup the year before. They were trying to juggle too many things. Look at France. They've obviously got the Olympics next year. They've withdrawn from hosting the Rugby League World Cup. Again, citing cost, because the previous host, us, we made a loss. Uh, and I really enjoyed the tournament, but it wasn't the best Rugby League World Cup. It wasn't on the same level as 2017 and 2013. And again, cost was a big issue. The COVID pandemic obviously had a massive impact on the Rugby League World Cup. The French stepped in after the US pulled out. Again, cost. And then a few months ago, they were like, yeah, we, we can't host it. Now, that's now been delayed a year so they can find a new host. That will be announced at some point in the next six to ten months. Something in that time frame, the International Rugby League Board. So it's going to be in the Southern Hemisphere, we just haven't announced the country yet. Now New Zealand has basically put its hand up saying, we'll do it. We've already got the stadiums and sporting infrastructure in place. 
fantastic. But I mean, we, 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 the, the the bidding process alone is ruinously expensive for some, uh, you know, uh, host cities or host countries for tournaments. There's a lot of money put in, and in some cases, they already start the infrastructure projects before they're even awarded the bid. So let that sink in. But the Commonwealths, no one's put their hand up to say we can definitely do this. We've got the infrastructure in place. We can do it. Now I remember some fantastic Commonwealth games. Kuala Lumpur in Malaysia was fantastic. Um, Absolutely fantastic in 1998. Well, that was one, I think, one of the first Commonwealth games I ever watched. Uh, Manchester, 2002. There is a legacy there because Man City now play at the, the Commonwealth Stadium, which is now the Etihad. And they doubled down on that investment. So, you know, and it transformed an area of Manchester that was very deprived. And the economic and social benefits are still being felt, you know, 21 years later. Uh, Glasgow were fantastic hosts. And there was a lot of money you know, pumped into uh, the Glasgow Commonwealths. But, Gold Coast was a bit of a disaster. Birmingham, while it was a good, good sporting event and everything about the organisation you know, and the athletes and the events, a lot of praise, a lot of records broken. But problem is Birmingham, well, yeah, they, they overextended themselves, but there were other extenuating circumstances. And at a current time when local and you know national government's uh, spending ability is heavily, heavily constrained, um, does anyone want to fork the bill for an event, which again, circling back to things like the World Cups and Olympics, has less of a reach because you're not getting all the best athletes and all the best, you know, in the of the best out of Commonwealth Games. It's a very niche um, uh, uh, games uh, for basically the British Empire. The old Empire Games was the name of it. So already you don't have the Chinese, you don't have the Russians, and a lot of other European countries. Don't they're not, you don't have the US big, big countries when it comes to the Olympics are not there. So the TV audience is less. You're going to make less money on TV adverts, on sponsorships. Um, then some of the events are only Commonwealth game events, uh, especially in track and field where they're not um, at the Olympics. You also have World Championship Athletics, which again, you have the big nations. Everyone takes part. So again, because it's a, it is a global event, but it's a lesser global event than comparison to a World Cup, comparison to an Olympics, comparison to a World Championships. And so therefore, you have to spend a lot of money bidding for it, but you don't necessarily get the economic return. And this is a problem that I think we're going to face with constrained government spending at local, state and national level. Who's going to want to fork the bill? There is no spare cash. Um, and, and, and many countries within the Commonwealth aren't particularly wealthy. And don't necessarily have the best security either. Um, there's only a handful of countries that really can financially go, we can host this. So is there a future for it? The same question could be asked of the Olympics. Because, again, as I mentioned, some of the examples, massive overruns, uh, lack of use of facilities post, you know, games. And then you've got to spend the maintenance on the upkeep. You know, you've got to spend money on upkeeping these facilities unless you can sell them on to a a private investor. So a sports team, for example, using a stadium um, or a private equity firm that will hold, you know, host, have the rights to an arena. It's very, very difficult to, to then, you know, continue that legacy of the sporting event. And, and we've seen that as well. I mean, underused facilities, um, crumbling facilities, you know, and, and it becomes very, very expensive to maintain them. Um, so we'll see what happens. But, yeah, it's not just the Commonwealth Games where there's question marks over the longevity or the, the viability or the commercial viability or profitability. Rugby League's having the same conversation. We could have the same conversation about various world championships in, in a variety of sports. Even hosting World Cups and, and Euros in, in, in football or you know, rugby union, it's expensive. It's expensive for the bidding process because you've got to put forward you, you know, your roadmap to, hey, look, we're investing in this infrastructure. We're investing in these communities. These are the commercial partners that we want to get domestically alongside the international domestic you know, commercial partners. Here's the TV deals that we want to thrash out. It, it, there's a lot to go in into the process just to get an event. And no one right now has the spare cash in, in the Commonwealth. And that includes you know, countries like South Africa uh, as well, who have got a great sporting pedigree, don't have the money to do it. Australia, they hosted Gold Coast. 
you know, they were hosts. Melbourne have pulled out. Gold Coast was sort of on the fence. Do they, can they justify hosting it again? New Zealand, you know, the aftermath of COVID is having an impact and that isolation they had for the best part of two years. The UK, on the loads of local authorities, we have the facilities, but loads, it's just, is it viable? Canada, there's issues in Canada with, with a variety of issues. So the big nations that could host it, the ones with the, with, you know, the, the corporate partners and the business, they're like, we can't afford to do this. <laughs> if the big powerhouse economy nations within the Commonwealth can't afford to do it, God knows if there's a future for the Commonwealth Games because public finances just aren't up to it. And the Commonwealths don't, in recent games, are not turning as much for profit or even making a loss, whereas in Olympics, you get that international prestige and, and more global attention. So, you know, has it had its day? Is there a future? Place your thoughts in the comments section below. I'll be really interested to hear what viewers have uh, on the future of the Commonwealth Games. And if is there much interest outside of the Commonwealth looking at some of these world-class athletes in a variety of disciplines uh, compete? Uh, so there we go. Thank you very much for watching. Uh, place your thoughts below and I will have some more comment uh, content, should I say, for you very, very soon.